So you stumbled across a video of some dude on the internet doing some pretty cool tricks with this drone. You figured out that the type of flying that he's doing is something called FPV. Now, what exactly is FPV? And if I want to do it, like, where, where would I even start? Well, we're going to answer all those questions and many more right here in this video. Okay, so what is FPV? FPV is an acronym that stands for First Person View, which basically means you're flying an aircraft or driving a car from the perspective of the vehicle that you're in. So that means there's going to be a camera on board whatever remote control vehicle that you're in and a little transmitter that is sending the video feed to either a pair of goggles or a video screen. So it's like you're piloting the aircraft or driving an RC car from the perspective of that vehicle. Now, it's most commonly used in what's called mini quads uh, in the FPV community. Now, you can also technically call these drones, uh, but you'll never really see very many hobbyists actually use that term. Uh, you will also find something called FPV wings, uh, which are quite cool. They're very fast. They've got incredibly long range. And occasionally, you'll see FPV used on some model aircraft. Now what FPV is not. FPV is not any type of toy grade drone that will send any sort of video to your phone. So if your phone is receiving some sort of signal, usually over 2.4 gigahertz, uh, that is not an FPV system. And usually that will have a much higher latency where you really can't fly just off of the picture that you're getting from your phone. FPV has a much, much lower latency to the point where you will barely be able to tell that there's really uh, any latency at all. Okay, so how do I start? Uh, this is kind of a very big question that could be answered in a variety of different ways, and it's kind of different for every person. But there's a general consensus that the best way to get into FPV is through what's called a Tiny Whoop. Now, I'm not talking about like a specific name brand Tiny Whoop or really any particular type of micro quadcopter. Uh, what I'm referring to is something like this. These are either uh, brushed or brushless powered, uh, which is basically, it refers to the motor that's being used. Uh, so this is an example of a brush motor. I won't go into detail about what makes the two uh, uh, different because that'll uh, probably be like a whole new video of its own. But these drones are a lot smaller. They're very light and you can fly them indoors and they're also ducted so you can bump into people. So that's kind of the, the general term for like when I say tiny whoop. Uh, that's 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 what I mean. So what's so important about starting with a tiny whoop is so you can kind of learn the basics of flight. On a transmitter, you have four different inputs that you're giving the flight controller on the drone uh, through two sticks. Now the left stick, if you're an American, uh, up and down on here. I'll get my camera out. So take, for example, this left stick is the throttle. This will control the altitude of the drone by how much power that the battery will send to the motors. So by moving this left stick up, it sends the drone up. Also on this left stick, there's something called a yaw. Moving that kind of left and right. And that turns the head of the drone pretty much, looking to the left, looking to the right. This right stick is for forward to the side, backwards, and to the side. So this controls basically your, your roll and your pitch. Now an experienced pilot will be able to coordinate his yaw, his throttle, his pitch, and his roll to make very smooth turns and maneuvers. The easiest way to learn that is really through something small that you can crash a lot and won't break. Another one of the benefits of starting with something like a tiny whoop is that there's little to no soldering involved when something does go wrong. For example, if you cook a motor, uh, which will sometimes happen if you've flown it too hard or if you're just, you've flown it so much that, I mean, these, these motors only have uh, a set amount of time that they'll actually uh, work. So pretty much it's plug and play. 
So you just unplug the motor, plug it back in. If you break a flight controller, get a new flight controller, screw it in, plug it in. There's no soldering whatsoever uh, involved, which means it's very convenient and it's easy to learn the basics for just about just about any age. Once you've kind of mastered the art of flying one of these tiny whoops, then you'll be ready to graduate for something a little bit bigger. Now there's two branches you can go down. One, you go straight to building your own mini quad. Proper five inch, like the quads that you kind of see behind me, uh, those are mini quads. So those are a lot more powerful. You have to build them yourself. So there's soldering involved. You kind of have to know a little bit about beta flight. Uh, but I would recommend trying to get a simulator and learning acro mode before you do anything. Uh, acro mode is a type of flight that is a little bit different from a tiny whoop in that in a tiny whoop, when you give it forward input and then release that uh, kind of right stick, it'll auto level itself out. As soon as you're no longer giving it an input, it will kind of, it's, it's, it's an auto level mode. Now in acro mode, that doesn't happen. You roll it forward, you let you stop giving it an a, uh, input, it'll stay at whatever angle that the drone is at. So if it's upside down, it'll just chill upside down. So this means you can do rolls, uh, you've flips, you can do all the fancy maneuvers that you've probably seen internet videos of. Now acro takes a long time to really master. And the problem with learning on a full size mini quad is that you're probably going to crash it and it's a lot more likely to break than one of these. And the parts are also a lot more expensive. So tiny whoops are definitely the most cost effective way to get into FPV. And if you really want to learn acro mode, which I highly recommend that you do, I would use a simulator. So here's some of my best beginner tips. Use the internet. Join a Facebook group. I'll post uh, two of my favorites on screen here. And also use YouTube. There's tons of content on there, not just on how to fix something if it's broken, but just tips of you know growing your piloting skills. Uh, the FPV community is a really wonderful community. A lot of people are very supportive. Sure, you'll find a few trolls, but it really is a very special it's a very special hobby to be a part of. Uh, it's definitely not the easiest on your wallet, so be forewarned. But, I mean, there's, there's nothing like it. I really can't compare it to anything else. Another tip is to fly with others. Try to find people in your area who are also very interested in FPV. Uh, and flying with other people on a regular basis, that's the best way to grow your skills as a pilot is to consistently have a group that will kind of push each other to get better and to progress as pilots. And the deeper you get into FPV, you're going to want to invest into some good gear. So before you spend $500 on building a very extremely nice mini quad, like the ones behind me, I would invest in a radio first. This you will use to fly every aircraft that you have. So this transmitter, I have all my drones set up to, all of my RC aircraft that I've got, everything runs through the same radio. And it's programmable, it is very convenient. I like the feeling of the gimbals a lot. So a really nice radio will help you progress a lot more as a pilot because typically the entry level radios that you see most often really don't offer a wide range of sizes, I guess you could say, or a wide range of movement. So it's hard to get your skill level to, it's hard to get your skills to another level. The next thing I would invest in getting is FPV goggles. Now when you're starting, whatever's cheapest really would be the best, especially if you really aren't sure if you're gonna like it or not. I started with a pair of like $60 box goggles uh, and then I upgraded to these Fat Shark Attitude V4s. And these I fly all my FPV stuff with. They are very comfortable. Uh, they have excellent uh, quality. 
and they look amazing in my opinion. And one of the last things I might add is uh, don't be an idiot. Uh, and I mean that in a very, I mean that in the nicest way possible. Uh, unfortunately, the FPV community can also kind of get a bad reputation uh, among the media particularly because uh, there's a few examples of people flying uh, a little recklessly a little bit too close to other people uh, flying in private property and uh, heaven forbid too close to airplanes like full-scale airplanes and doing like a whole bunch of illegal stuff uh, don't please don't uh, participate or encourage uh, that type of behavior because the FAA really cracks down on that type of behavior and it ends up hurting all the hobbyists uh, when stuff like that happens. So uh, if you're going to do it, just make sure no one finds out about it. So yeah. <laughs> now I met a friend of mine here at MTSU who's been into RC airplane side of things like line of sight flying for a, uh, for quite, quite a few years now. And he's never flown a drone FPV. I actually sold him one of my old uh, FPV whoops uh, not too long ago and he's kind of been flying at line of sight. So what I did is I recorded his very first time behind the goggles and then I kind of uh, critiqued his flying a bit and gave him advice on how to get better. And I'll probably play that clip for you guys here to uh, so you can kind of understand what it will be like in your first FPV experience and just some other uh, useful flying tips uh, for beginners. All right, so uh, I've got Jason here next to me and he's never really flown uh, FPV before. Uh, but what, what kind of experience do you have? Um, I've flown a bunch of uh, remote control aircraft er everywhere from trainers to uh, 100 mile an hour F-86 Sabre. But uh, no in FPV, none, none whatsoever. He got a, a little Inductrix FPV Plus here the other day. Yeah. And he's been flying it a little bit like line of sight. Yeah. Trying to uh, trying to get the gists of it, but uh, we're gonna put these goggles on you. These are some uh, Fat Shark Attitude V4s. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Here, uh, go put these on, and then let's kind of see how what the your instincts are. Is between flying in person, you know, line yeah. of sight. Line of sight versus FPV, because it's definitely very different. Now, I definitely didn't learn this way. I learned kind of FPV first and then line of sight, but it's very different going the other way. All right. So one of the most important things to kind of kind of keep in mind is when you're flying FPV, always fly forward, especially when you're learning. There's a lot of tricks you can do, like Matty flips, uh, reverse orbits, where you're kind of doing some blind uh, maneuvers. But especially when you're learning FPV for the first time, uh, always be flying forwards. Okay. Always or try to keep it forward. So don't avoid. Uh, like if it looks like you're about to hit something, uh, try to kind of do a 180 yaw and then throttle back the other way instead of trying to go backwards because as soon as you start going backwards it's that that's when you're going to like Is it harder? Stuff. Yeah. Because I'm used to, you know, seeing, okay, I'm hitting something, I can pull back. But I don't exactly. have that because I'm in the first person. Yes. Um, it's definitely way different. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of yeah. strange because... I mean, I'm used to, okay, I'm this far off, you know, this surface, mm -hmm. I can reference that and give it more throttle or less throttle. Um, it's very strange so far. Yeah. And it's also kind of hard to keep altitude. Yeah. In an FPV because you have a different sense of kind of kind of where, where you're at. It's a lot easier line of sight to kind of hover it uh, than FPV, but you kind of, you know. You have to play with that. So. Yeah. It's like a video game. You won't be you won't be immediately really good at it, uh, especially for your first time ever doing anything yeah. like it. So and it's just strange because I'm trying to use like auditory cues and everything because I'm I can't I'm basically blind somewhat, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's definitely definitely weird. 
for flying, you know, line of sight for mm. seven years off and on, I think. Mm. It's just something ridiculous. I don't remember exactly when I started, but... Long-time hobbyist. Finally getting into FPV, so... Oh, battery's dead. Oh, yeah, let's put a new battery. Freshen one up. So, while Jason puts in that new battery, I also want to add another thing, which is, when you're flying FPV, don't try to keep track of where it is in your mind spatially. Like, don't keep track of the aircraft relative to you. Uh, you really want to feel like you're in the aircraft. And everything kind of revolves around you. Don't think of, the drone is three feet behind me, I need to go a little bit lower to get under this uh, chair, and then I'm going to fly it around. Like, don't, don't think about where it is, if that makes sense. Don't think about where it is. Uh, relative to you, think of really everything relative to the drone. Like you're flying in an aircraft. Like you're 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 flying in a Cessna. You know you're flying in a, a Diamond Forty. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever it is. Like you're not you're not flying something RC. You are physically inside of it. And that's what's so cool about FPV is it kind of gives you that feeling, but it can also be very unnatural at times. So. It's very strange for somebody that's been flying. You know. Yeah. Everything. Three per, uh, kind of third person, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely different. Some habits that need to be kind of unlearned, but yeah. Space shuttle. Mm -hmm. Well, it is but, fun, but it's different. Yeah. And it, it'll take a lot of time and practice to kind of get Learn it. get to a point where you're kind of comfortable Yeah, flying it. It's it's a very, very different. Like, there, I, I, there's, nothing, there's nothing like it. Oh, yeah. No, I can definitely tell that somebody that's getting into the hobby, just, just go FPV. Mm -hmm. Honestly, just spend the money and do it. And, uh, I know we were talking... Uh, Possibly just doing a monitor setup. Yes. Before he is, that's kind of a medium mm -hmm. for somebody that, you know, was flying RC planes, you know, not FPV and then going. Oh, yeah. It's especially coming from line of sight. If I had a monitor, I'd kind of let Jason look at that monitor uh, to kind of fly for his first FPV experience. But I don't, all I really have with me uh, is these goggles. But. If you have like a lot of line of sight experience like Jason does, uh, buy yourself a monitor because that way you can still fly line of sight and then you can kind of look at, yeah, yeah, reference, look at that FPV screen to kind of ease yourself into it. Um, I'm but like cold turkey here. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you might actually become a better FPV pilot just by going straight to the goggles because it's yeah. kind of like, you know, moving to a foreign country where you cannot speak their language versus just taking some, you know, online classes somewhere. Like, you could probably learn a lot and you could still learn effectively taking those online classes. But when you're in another country fully immersed in it and, it, like, everything you do is, you know, with those goggles on, you're become you're going to become a much more effective speaker of that language or, in this case, a much more effective FPV pilot. Yeah. So... So, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Yeah, keep up, keep up the good work. Keep up yeah. the practicing, and hopefully, I can get better. yeah. Hopefully, we'll come up with an update video where Jason's just gonna be a pro. He's gonna be like whooping all around my uh, my course that I've got set up in here. Okay, I can tell him right by that spaceship. I don't know. Well. ISS. You are currently orbiting the International Space Station. Well, I hit it now. Houston, we have a problem. So I'd like to end this video by kind of just emphasizing that FPV is not something scary. It is not something impossible to figure out. And it's not limited to like, oh my gosh, you're an FPV pilot. You must be so smart. No, anyone can fly FPV. You just have to put in the time, uh, put in the efforts, and care about becoming a better pilot. The FPV community is awesome. 
the hobby can be it can be a pain in your wallet at times but it can also be the most fun that you've you've ever had if you have any questions please uh comment below uh let me know if this is helps anyone i'm also going to post some of my favorite beginner drone packages uh in the in the uh, d video description uh, just you know if you or a friend are trying to get into FPV uh, as budget friendly as possible, I'll put some of my favorite options for that down in the description so below. So uh, do check that out. Uh, but that will be it for this video. Uh, please click subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. And thank you so much for watching. Take care. Toodles.